Hello friends, today I'm combining two of Trinidad's best, bold, flavorful, aromatic curry shrimp wrapped in a soft and flaky paratha. And if wrap roti isn't your thing, feel free to serve it on a plate with all the options side by side. And to tempt your appetite even more, Dalpri is making a special guest appearance. So if you're interested, let's start cooking! Every delicious home-cooked meal in the Caribbean begins with green seasoning. And many of us have green seasoning in the fridge or the freezer. Chances are, if you're new to Trinidadian cooking or Caribbean cooking, you don't have green seasoning. And for those of you who don't know what green seasoning is, it's basically a blend of herbs, including scallion, known as green onion or chives in Trinidad, parsley, flat leaf, curly leaf, cilantro, which I don't have today, culantro, which is a flat leaf herb, thyme, and I just found this oregano in the garden, so I'm going to add a little piece. Some people add onion, hot pepper, and you definitely need lots of garlic. And because I know you may not have green seasoning in your fridge, I'm going to make a quick batch. We'll use some in today's recipe, and the balance you can keep in your fridge to marinate meats, pilau, curries, stews, or soups. And it adds a fantastic flavoring to your meals. And this is lettuce that I picked in the garden for my lunch, so just ignore that. I also had these lovely um, herbs. I didn't plant a lot, so I'm very fortunate to have found these in the garden, despite not watering anything or being here for most of the summer so far. But if you do have pre-made green seasoning, you could skip this part, and I'll let you know how much to use when you're seasoning your shrimp. And you'll start by rinsing all the herbs very well to remove any dirt, pick off any yellowing, wilting, or melting bits. And if you're picking it from your own garden, there may be bugs as well. But don't tell my kids that, or else they won't be eating anything from the garden. My husband stopped eating um, lettuce from the garden because I brought it in one day and there were like a hundred little long bugs running all over the place so he said no more lettuce from the garden for him well his loss my gain next we'll cut it into smaller pieces so as not to strain the blender or the food processor and always use time that's not woody or has thick, thick stems it's very dangerous when you're cooking for kids like this is very thick to cook with thick stems it can get stuck in your throat so usually when it's like this I just add it during cooking and pick it off when it's done cooking. Rough chop. I don't like adding onion. I like um, adding onion during the cooking process and not necessarily in my green seasoning. I also do not add oil or vinegar in my green seasoning. I like to keep it uh, minimum as possible or minimal as possible. Next, I'll place it in the food processor. Making green seasoning is a very messy thing. That's why I try to do it only once a month. But I'm making an exception today for you. Add your garlic. So general idea of how to make it, you take two bunches of scallion, one bunch of parsley, one bunch of cilantro, one bunch of colantro if you have, and about one cup of garlic. If you have pimento peppers, Caribbean pimento peppers, you can use that too. But I know many of you don't have access to that, so I won't be using it today. I want this recipe to be um, accessible and easy for everyone, even the beginners and those who are not familiar with Caribbean cooking. And because I like cooking with color, creating colorful meals, not only for the phytonutrients, but to, to make it look appetizing as well, I'm going to add um, about four mini bell peppers to this. You could use a half red, yellow, or orange bell pepper. In the Caribbean, we have a make-do culture. You use whatever you have and then, then pulse the grind. At some point, just clean down the side of your bowl and repeat. And you don't have to go out and buy mason jars, old pasta jars, or coffee jars are ideal. Save them. And how fabulous is that? It does have a few sprigs from the time, but I don't have small kids and I can pick it off during the cooking process. So ideally, don't use it. Add it um, during the cooking whole. But how amazing is that? Smells absolutely delicious. Let me put it in the jar and we'll start seasoning the shrimp. 
and there you have it, the green gold of the Caribbean, the secret behind flavorful Caribbean cooking. If you make it in advance, it can help you save time. Uh, not only it, does it add loads of flavor to your cooking, it also adds nutrition and nutrients. Make a jar today. And now let's season, but first we need to slice some onion. Just slice half of a medium onion. Slice onion and hot pepper. This is two pounds of shrimp, which I have cleaned and rinsed and drained. I'll add about two teaspoons of salt, use less. If you're using table salt, maybe I always start at one and a half. Let me do one and a half. You add half of the onion or well, three quarters of the onion and as much hot pepper as you like. Green seasoning, that's one, two, three, four. And if your green seasoning, if your green seasoning does not have enough garlic, at this point you can add about a tablespoon of garlic. And we don't want to put too much green seasoning to overpower the flavor of the shrimp. Sometimes too much is not a good thing. And black pepper, about half teaspoon. I ground this, I ground, ground it, I grind it. I ground it last, yesterday. What the hell? And about half teaspoon of black pepper. Don't put away that reserved onion and hot pepper. We're gonna use it next. Tightly cover your green seasoning and put it in the fridge. And this is my old faithful. I've had it for almost 14 years. And it's my go-to for curries and stews. It has withheld the test of time. And if you can invest in one pot, you should buy this pot. It will stay for generations in your family. I'll leave the link below. Place it over high heat to bring it to temperature. Mix well to combine and ideally marinate for a minimum of 30 minutes. Looks amazing, smells amazing, and it's going to taste fabulous. Next, add a couple of tablespoons of oil to the pot, about four tablespoons. To make this healthier, don't use vegetable oil or seed oils. Extra virgin oil, olive oil, coconut oil, or avocado oil are considered healthier oils. The next steps are very simple and this cooks quickly, so pay close attention and stay tuned. Add the reserved onion and hot pepper. We'll add curry powder. I'm using four tablespoons curry powder, one teaspoon of turmeric. I'm lowering the heat to low. Two tablespoons of green seasoning, and that is optional. We've already well seasoned the shrimp. Still well to combine. I'm rinsing the bowl of the food processor and I'll add a little bit of water. Half cup. Open your windows and put on your air cleaner. I'll cook this outside. I'm going to cook this until the liquid evaporates and becomes grainy and fragrant. And also removing the rawness of the curry. Sometimes they say that raw curry hurts the tummy, so prevention is better than cure. Once the curry separates from the oil in the bungee process, just like that, you'll add in your seasoned shrimp. And use a lighter bowl to season it in. Sometimes fancy can be challenging. Still well to combine and coat that shrimp with that delicious curry paste we've made. The heat is on medium. And you may be hearing the air cleaner in the background. Just cook this. I'm going to bungee it again for about five minutes, stirring. Just want to uh, develop the flavor in there, help the shrimp to absorb all that delicious flavor and seasoning before it continues to cook. And we knock the spoon, not to annoy you, but to remove all the stuff that's stuck to it. The seasoning. We need all the seasoning we can get. Optional, you could have added a tomato in here, and if your thyme, if your thyme sprigs were woody, then you'll add it at this point as well. 
and you don't want to cook it too long on high heat to allow all the natural juices to evaporate because we need that. We need those juices to cook the shrimp. So now we will cover the pot, reduce the heat to low and allow it to cook for about 15 minutes. Set the timer for 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes starting now. It's been about seven minutes. I'm gonna check it, stirring. Clean down the sides of the pot and cover and continue to cook. For another eight minutes, if the liquid has evaporated, you can add about a cup of water. No need to add too much water because if you have to uh, simmer that down, you're going to overcook the shrimp. Knock the pot, cover and cook. Taste for salt, add more now if required. The shrimp has released a lot of juices. There may not be a need to add more liquid at this point. Just give it a stir. We have about two minutes, two to three minutes remaining. If you've not tasted and added additional salt, if required, do so now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. And that's it. You can add chopped bandania or scallion at this point. But other than that, it's done. And you still have sauce if you wanted to eat it with sada roti or dosti roti or paratha roti. I'll be making a paratha roti for this. The dalpuri is perfect, will go perfectly with this. You can have this on rice or with dal and rice. If you want the version with potatoes, I'll leave the link to that below. But any type of roti or rice or quinoa or farro will be perfect. See that amazing, delicious, luscious sauce? Looks tasty, doesn't it? Simply amazing. Cooking with Ria, curry shrimp, shrimp curry, whatever you call it. So I'm just gonna cover and allow it to cook for one more minute. And I'll show you how to make the roti. And we'll eat soon. Next, I'll need flour for the dough, for the paratha. We have flour, sugar, which is optional, baking powder and salt somewhere in here. We'll mix well to combine. Create a claw with your hand and just turn it around like that until it's well combined. Next, I'll make a well in the center. I'll add the water a little bit at a time. Move it from side to side. If it's too sticky, I'll add a sprinkle of flour to bring it together to firm it up. Bring it towards the center and knead for a few minutes. Rub it with some butter or oil and allow it to rest minimum 30 minutes. Overnight in the fridge is ideal. Bring it to room temperature before we move on to the next step. Let me show you how to do also do this in a KitchenAid mixer. You place all the ingredients in the bowl of the mixer. I, I like mixing it with this spatula to expedite the process, get everything really mixed well, and then we'll knead. Attach your dough hook, lock it in, level two, plug it on, level two, gradually add water. Lukewarm water. Increase. Decrease. You need for about five minutes. Add oil or butter. Next, we'll add flour to bring it together. 
as much as you need. Next, we'll stuff it and form a dough ball. A little bit of oil really helps to bring it together, or butter. As you can see, it's a very soft dough. Cover and allow it to rest. Next, we'll divide the dough into six equal pieces. Each piece should be around six ounces. You could weigh it and divide it if you want to be precise. So we just take this, it will be very soft. If it's too soft after sitting, just re-knead it to firm it up. And that, that's it. Pull it up towards the top. Pinch, squeeze, and rotate. And that's it. We'll allow it to sit. And because the dough is very soft, we can start roughing it right away if it's not soft enough. If you press it and it stays, that's a good indication that it's ready. But if it springs right back up, you have to allow it to sit for an additional 15 to 30 minutes. For the next step, you'll need dried flour, also known as partan in Trinidad, ghee butter oil or a combination, and a rolling pin. Flour your work surface. And I'm going to make these smaller than I usually do, just so it will be more manageable for you as well. Place the dough in the center, stretch it out, or roll it out. As you can see, it's not pulling back, it's ready and roll it out. Just a piece of parsley from today's cooking. Roll. Next, take your butter, oil, ghee, or your combo, and just rub it on the surface. Even. Then sprinkle a bit of flour over the surface. That will help keep the layers separated. And next, we'll cut from the center to the ends, and we'll start rolling. Rolling all the way around, clockwise direction, and then, then you'll tuck it in. Place it down, and tuck in the top as well. And that's it. And that is your wrapped paratha. I'll repeat for the remaining five, and then we'll start the cooking process. But this has to rest for about 30 minutes. Next, we'll cook the roti. Flour your surface, put a layer on, press it. Next, I'll roll out the roti using the rolling pin. Get your tawa heated over high heat. Roll it out as thin or as thick as you like. Pick up the dough, place it on your arm. Once your towel is hot and you've buttered it like that, place your dough on, stretch it, and you can make the dough smaller. Because remember, this is a wrapped roti. If this is too large for you, make it smaller. The heat is on medium high. I'll butter it. Use, boil, use butter, oil, or ghee. Use as much or as little as you like. Next, we'll flip. Place a dabla under it or a long spoon, the handle of a spoon, and flip. Raise the heat to high since nothing's happening. The heat is on low now. You butter this side as well.
Always roll out the edges thin so it will cook evenly. Flip. And basap shot is traditionally beaten, but since we want to eat it in a wrapped roti, we will not be beating it today to release the layers. We want to keep it whole. If you don't like paratha, if you don't want to make paratha, you can also make dosa roti or sada roti with your shrimp or dalpuri. I already have a dalpuri, several videos with dalpuri. You can also check out the Trinidad chicken roti recipe. So just make sure the edges are fully cooked. You want a nice color on it. I don't like the roti too white. And if you like it crisp, you can cook it dark. Heat is on medium. You know it's done when it has a little bit of color and the edges are no longer raw. And you could test it by just pulling it apart. If it flakes easily, it's cooked. If it's still sticking together, it's raw. Traditional paratha, it's beaten. But as I said before, we're not going to beat it. I'm just going to wrap it. And repeat. I also made some delicious curry aloo. I have several videos with this recipe. I will leave the link below so you can eat it with your curry shrimp. Absolutely delicious, amazing and very simple to make. Beautiful, absolutely soft and simply delicious. No bossing up today, no beating. Everybody looks nice and pretty and neat. Yummy. And there you have it, absolutely delicious. Trini shrimp roti, we'll assemble it now. Pumpkin, curry shrimp, soft silky paratha. Curry aloo, some mango kuchula, and pepper sauce.